Hello, everyone. Uh, in this video, I'd like to talk to you about uh, Internet Protocol version 4 and the ICMP. And the outline of my talk is as follows. What is the role of IP and Internet working? This is really important. And when you think about Internet, uh, you're thinking more of using Internet. Uh, you don't, you haven't, I'm sure, haven't thought about technology behind it. So it's important to know um, why and how the internet protocol has created. Then after that, uh, I'll be talking to you about IPv4 packet header and uh, also the ICMP protocol as well. Let's get started. So let's talk about uh, what is the role of IP internet protocol? What do you think? Um, you know, what is the role of uh, internet? Uh, now, uh, using you have been using internet, let's think about the internet in more technology standpoint, okay? So as you know, in this world, there are different networks so owned and operated by independent organizations. For example, in Korea has SK and there, there's ALG, SK Telecom, and uh, there's Korea Telecom. And that's one organization, but in the United States, we have AT&T, Verizon, and a lot of different organizations. What about, you know, um, Europe, France? So it's, it's not, internet is not controlled by one organization in the world, right? When you think about it. So it's owned by the, a lot of different organization and um, those the network, needs to be able to work together somehow, right? So uh, what happened is uh, there are possible approaches. So one approach is uh, a gateway, uh, build a gateway, translate different protocol. It's like uh, having a language translator, right? So if you speak uh, Korean uh, to American, then the, there you will be a translator converting Korean to American, right? Uh, and um, or each network communicates with each other using common universal protocol. I know the universal protocol means that it's protocol used by everyone, everybody, right? So when you think about it, uh, to understand the network, there's a network A, this could be a Korean network, this could be a American network, this could be a European network. So whenever the, how they using it, how they controlling it, configuring how they implement it there is a one way is have a gateway whatever the you know uh they have uh, created in network a needs to be able to translate into b right it's like a translator you know like uh, I, I said uh translate from korean to english things like that and also goes to the network and this could be the you know america from america to france there needs to be another translator, right? So that's how you get the, all the networks work together. This is one of the way. So networks can be very simple uh, because it, it can support only one protocol. Um, but uh, when you look at this, how many gateway you need? Whole tons of them, right? We're talking about England, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Africa, all those things. It's mind boggling to have uh, so many types of gateway. It's not possible, right? So um, what, what we do is, uh, you know, why don't we create a common protocol used by everybody? You know, uh, so individual may not support uh, virtual connection, QoS, signaling, all different, right? So um, what is the common uh, denominator for being able to talk to one another, okay? Um, you know, internet has no real structural organization as you can see because everybody is uh, operating independently. So, what what's happening is uh, you know uh, one of the another way is everybody use uh, you know common internet protocol IP. So it doesn't matter how you configure in network A in Korea, United States, or you know Europe or France. 
So there need to be a common uh, protocol being able to communicate between the different networks. <coughs> in other words, in the, instead of uh, someone translating from Korean to English, English to French, uh, its common denominator means that everybody speak English, right? But let's say this is uh, English, everybody speak English. You and I, we all speak English. French people speak English, uh, you know, uh, Latin America, Europe, everywhere they speak common language called English. Then you won't have any problem, right? That doesn't mean that, uh, you know, the culture uh, is a common for everyone. Culture can be different. The way they do things different, but you're communicating using a common language, English. And the, that is the concept of a routers, internet protocol. So it brings uh, heterogeneous uh, different types of network into a common, they tie everything together using common internet protocol, okay? So when you talk about the router is, uh, uh, router is a common protocol. It supports a network to network protocol. Um, it's a routers that when you think about it, it's a relatively simple packet switch. Okay. So the envision that the router should not be, you know, working too hard. It should be very simple. Let's think about that. Okay. It should be fairly simple. It shouldn't be very complicated. Okay. If it's very simple and, and, and it's not complicated, Who's going to do the, all the dirty work, which means is a packet is not delivered and the properly, uh, maybe uh, it's not delivered in you know, a proper order, a packet could be missing. A lot of those things could occur, right? So if you're too simple, it's not able to take care of those things. So let's say um, instead of a router, IP taking care of it, let's say TCP take care of it, TCP. Right, there's a TCP layer, which is on the fourth layer. So, so basically, uh, it's using common uh, denominator, which is uh, baseline expectation for capability. Uh, so everybody uses the internet protocol for communicating between different networks. So that is what they call have a created called standard, right? So in the United States, which is the Internet Engineering Task Force, that's uh, more of an internet standards. That's what we are being used. I'm sure it's being used in Korea as well, okay? But in Europe, they have, they have a different standards, but they use a common uh, denominator is IETF, but uh, they have an International Telecommunication Union, ITU. Uh, in that sense, they have a different routing protocol like a ISIS but in this country we use OSPF and I believe in Korea you guys use OSPF as well so that is the role I need you to it's really important to understand what is a fundamental responsibility and functionality of IP okay so uh, when you talk about the IP in history in version 4 was created back in 1978 before you were born right so in our Department of Defense, uh, they were doing a lot of this uh, research. You know, they have came out with, uh, you know, a new uh, protocol, TCP IP in, in ARPANET, and that's how they created in 1983. That's a long time ago, okay? So, so like a design philosophy is IP is designed to be a simple, it's a simple to minimize the burden on the network. It's, it needs to be very simple. Complexity, if you want to complex to handle all different situations, that's responsible for the higher layer, like a TCP layer, okay? As you go lower the layer, as you can see, like a physical layer, it's faster. It's more of not much about thinking. It's more of a transmitting fast as possible. So higher the air layer, then you see a more of an intelligence. What if this happens? What if that happens? How to handle those things? So um, the higher layer, the is more responsive it does it have. So to make it simple, what they have created is uh, 
best effort, best effort service is a connectionless diagram delivery. Uh, well, basically, it does not guarantee the delay or you know order and anything like that. You just they do do best they, they can to deliver the packet. Okay, so let's take a look at the you know IP header. Um, you know, version four IP datagram format is just like this. Is a version is either version four or version six. Okay, then the header length is uh, it tell you how big the header is, right? So, um, you know, you know, those are things as you know, the TOS type of service, origin and definition is a PPP stand for priority, okay, precedence. Just like here, you know, routine, probably immediate internet network control, network control. What is it used for? Okay. But, the, you know, network control is more, um, you know, higher priority. But thing about it is, you know, when you're talking about the internet, uh, TOS not really being used much uh, when you think about internet because, you know why? Because it's a best effort service. So he doesn't care. Okay. But however, when you think about uh, using a video and voice, uh, there needs to be a QoS built into it, right? So in that, set, in, the, in that case, what they do is uh, they create a, another protocol, uh, you know, to implement a quality of service. So, so as you can see, in the, when you talk about the internet protocol, the IP is a very you know, uh, thin, and but the rest of them, there are a lot of different protocols available, like a uh, routing protocol, you know, RIP, OSPF, ISIS, there's TCP, there's UDP. So all those protocols are created in such a way that the uh, IP protocol, you know, you know uh, be able to function efficiently, effectively, okay? So, so this is one of the case and the TOS field, you know, um, you know, you could use a different field here as a TTRS. If you just checked it, it's a minimize delay, maximize output and, ma and minimize if it's, a, it's set to one, maximize, you know, reliability and a monetary cost. Even though it's set it to be one, what is the meaning of a maximizing throughput, right? There's no value to it. So. Um, to determine what is that, um, uh, you know, uh, the service level agreement between the, you know, service provider and uh, the users needs to be determined. And basically, in our cases, at and Verizon, and those companies do it for us, okay? But however, it, you know, those bits, it's built, it's there, but it's not being used much when you think about it, okay? So... Uh, TOS is not clear. Is it, it clear and require more work for router? I mean, it, it does require more work for the router. You know, uh, not well is supported. You know, thing about it is, let's say, few of the routers supported, but uh, when you go to downstream, it's uh, none of the routers supported. That means you lose this uh, benefit. Okay, so if you need to use the TOS field. All the routers needs to have uh, a, a TOS field being used, okay? So remember I told you that they create another protocol to provide the QoS. In this case, uh, when you talk about the IETF RFC 2474, they have created what they called is a DevServe, okay? They used to be an insert, but they, because of the scalability reason, it wasn't really took off, but uh, they create a DevServe call point here. And uh, DevServe is a use for the type of service or quality of service, QoS, is being used. It's used for mainly for the video, a very time sensitive, reliable packet needs to be sent. So uh, it needs to be worked with the DevServe, okay? So another thing is a total length, you know, is maximize uh, length is uh, 65,535 bytes, that is the maximum. That's pretty big, that's a lot, right? So uh, the problem is uh, if, if, if it's really big, uh, it can work with a very time sensitive you know, uh, uh, packet, you know, time sensitive, you cannot wait until it's all, all get filled up, you need to send it, okay? So another thing is the problem is if you lose that packet, it's a huge packet, 
then he needs to recreate it and send it again. And that's going to take some additional time. So the shorter the packet, um, sometimes it's better for very high sensitive, uh, uh, what do you call the communications. But uh, if it's longer the packets, they could be a lot of different problems, right? So, you know, non-time sensitive, you know, what do you call that the traffics are, I would say email, I would say. Uh, the other things and, you know, transferring the file, those kind of things could be a very nine-time sensitive uh, uh, transmission. So that's the length. So also the identification. A lot of times you cannot send it in the whole chunk, right? They uh, divide it up. So, uh, you know, uh, identification kind of like uh, determine which packet is belong to which part. Okay, so, so which ones go first, which one is second, those kind of things. You know, a flag used for, you know, this is end, you know, indication and, uh, you know, offset is for like a dummy uh, value for the fragmentation. You need to feel that you cannot send a partial, you know, a byte, right? So what I'm talking about fragmentation here is that you can, you know, IP datagram can fragment into multiple datagram. Okay, so uh, each route independently, you know, what I'm saying is, is so once it's fragmented, you know, packet could go to left, go to right, but ultimately that the packets uh, will arrive at the destinations. Okay, so, you know, fragments all go separate way in the reassemble only at the destination host. It's not at the, not in the middle. It's not at the intermediate routers. Okay. Okay, so so you know one of the things I told you about is uh, being fragmented is good because if you use a big packet, you have to create a you know it takes a while to you know uh, send it. But the, well, there is some also the downside of having a fragmentation. If it's too small, it you know later on it's, it turns out you have a more of a overhead messages like a header control messages. So, you know, when you talk about the efficiency wise, it's not that really great, okay? So, uh, you know, that, that's the one of the problem. So another thing is a fragment is lost. Let's say they're trying to put everything together at the destination. If it's lost, then you have to send the whole entire datagram again, okay? Um, so another thing is a reassembly timer. There's a certain time it needs to arrive at the destination. If it's not, it disregards everything. Okay, a professor. If it disregards, how do they how do they get it? And you know, what happened is uh, you won't send the acknowledgement back at the TCP layer. Then the other side, you think that oh, I did not receive the acknowledgement back from TCP acknowledgement back from the destination. I guess the packet is love. They're going to send the whole packet again. Okay. So hopefully that doesn't happen often, but uh, they do when there's a congestions occur, right? Um, a lot of the traffic causes collisions and not have to process all of it and fill up the queues and the, the, the packet falls out. A lot of different things could happen, right? So because it's the best effort service. So... So uh, the, the fragmentation, I don't think you should feel all fragment belongs to the same um, original data I mean, each it puts together, okay? So, you know, um, so the flag uh, is, uh, you know, basically says, uh, you know, if it DF, it because don't, don't fragment it, okay? MF stands for all fragments are more than more fragments, except less fragment has a zero means, um, that's it, okay? Okay. So fragment offset is for assembly fragmented data grab. It's like a dummy variable. It's just, you know, just, just meet the eight byte units. That's what purpose is to, okay? So, uh, the, you know, fragment is there in the, you know, you know, in the next slide, I'm gonna explain to you uh, briefly is done in this way, and they go into you know fragment to three fragments here, right? This is a, a IP datagram at the header. Uh, this is a sending source. Here's all the data. 
he fragment into a certain portion of it, he add an IP header, okay? It's, it's basically the going to the same destination. It's from the same source. But, uh, you know, uh, the fragment is different you know, because, you know, fragment one, the fragment two, and the fragment three. When it comes together, you know, it turns out uh, sometime that this, you know, uh, this packet will could arrive earlier than this packet. So, um, so it needs to have an order, you know, which one comes first, which one comes, which one is the first, which one is second, which is third. And it sits in the queue and uh, figures that out when the, all the uh, fragment comes in, okay? So uh, here's the data, here's the IP header, okay? So example of a data going 288 bytes is fragmented into three fragments. Uh, I would say that 128, 128, and 32 bytes. So header length is five, okay? And and, and the, you know, you know uh, the, that's the pretty consistent, okay? It doesn't change. So total length is, uh, depends on uh, fragments, 128, 128, 38, uh, you know, uh, this is, uh, oh, it is is a divided uh 20 140 and and the offset is uh zero for you know first one 16 and the 32 for the you know uh third one and identification is a 99 is basically is saying that the those three items are you know belong to the same datagram okay you know, that's the identification mf is uh and one step for more to come, zero is the last one, okay? Zero is the last one. Having a zero, 16, and 32, what it means, it keeps in the order, you know, which ones go first, which ones go, which ones third, okay? So it keeps in the order, okay? That's what I wanted to say about the fragmentations, okay? Um, time to leave is 8-bit. So in a maximum lifetime packet in second to prevent influent loop. Because the network can be a very complex and the packet could be lost in the, you know, in the network. It, it, could, be, it could be going around the loop, going around the circle. It's never getting to the destination. So in that case, uh, somehow it, uh, the packet needs to do uh, die out. Uh, it needs to have some kind of indication that uh, this packet is lost, then you know, then you know, then, then die out means you know, get rid of it, right? So what they do is they recommend the initial value is sixty four. What what when it goes to each half, one half to another one, it decrements one, like a sixty three, sixty two, sixty one. So it's envisioning that before sixty two half, you will eventually get to the destination, right? If it's not, if it's going around the circle, uh, when it reaches zero, then this packet is, is a, you know, disregarded by the router, okay? So another thing is uh, that's the TTL time to leave. The protocol is, uh, what is the protocol at the higher level? Is that a, in a TCP or is it UDP? You know, what are the other, uh, you know, protocol at the higher level? Like if protocol, we're talking about, there's the ICMP, TCP exterior gateway protocol. Excuse me. Uh, and the any private interior gateway protocol uh, in the UDP. And the, this is a, a border gateway protocol for, you know, between the network, okay? Then a private interior gateway protocol is like OSPF, ISIS. You know, there's interdomain routing protocol, ERGIP, OSPF. So what are the, you know, other, uh, you know, a protocol on top of it, okay? Checksum is to detect any header and any error in the packet. So checksum is, is uh, you know, basically, uh, uh, set to zero, then takes one complement the sum of all 16 in the header. Um, um, 
it, it calculates every packet when it will be sent, okay? So um, over here is, uh, you know, packet header, you know, here's a checksum, you know, it, it has a two bytes, has a, it, all these summations, add them up, that needs to be the checksum here. That should be matching to the checksum sent by the source, okay? So if it does not match, then whatever is calculated versus whatever originally assigned is, is different, means that there must be a, some kind of error has occurred, okay? Okay. So uh, there's a source address uh, and the destination address. It, every host has a unique 32-bit address. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's nothing unusual. I'm sure most of you know, there's a network allows efficient routing, internet working. And uh, I don't think I need to talk about. You know, address is usually a four decimal number. As you can see, you know, one of the problem right now is uh, running out the address, right? They use a lot of companies as uh, network address translation for internal IP address because IP address is running out. And that's one of the big reason that IPCP6 is created because you know, IP address is running out. That seems to be the case for, you know, 15, 20 years ago, uh, still uh, it's a case for the, that's a big problem because we could have created like iPhone and the, your phone there that itself is on IP address. And other than that, a lot of sensors, a lot of the IoT is required to have its own IP addresses as well. That creates a tremendous amount of uh, IP address the need, okay? So, so this is uh, you know a bit allocation for that you know different classes. Um, there's a different way of uh, defining the addresses. I, I think uh, you have to you know use host ID, network ID, you know the combination of it. Okay, you know for the medium sized campus, then you will have a 14B for network ID, 16B for host ID. In a small network, then you have an 8B for the host ID. And uh, you know, uh, three uh, is twenty-one bits for network ID. Okay. So one of the problem is, uh, you know, host moving to a different network, so it needs to get a new address, right? It's like your your home address, apartment address. If you move from your apartment to different location. Even with the same in, in the campus, different location, you get a different address, right? Exactly. You need to think of your uh, home address or apartment address is equivalent to IP address, okay? So whenever you move, the, your IP address changes, right? So another thing is uh, your name. When you move, does your name change? No, right? Your name does not change. So I'm Tom, so if I you know, move to maybe California, I'm still Tom, right? So your name is like a MAC address. So MAC address does not change. It, it, once you, when it's created in the factory, it comes with a MAC address. It's a unique identification number for each of the device, okay? So it's having a, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, that's the MAC address use case, okay? So another thing is, uh, you know, class C network growing into class B network. This is, uh, you know, because in, when you talk about the class C, it has a very eight bits of a host ID, which is they think that they're gonna grow the, you know, company, it's gonna get bigger. So in the initially they uh, use a B, but in that case, B network, which is, uh, you know, uh, 14 bits network ID, 16 bits for host ID, they think that they're going to use all of it, but a uh, lot of cases, a lot of company does not use all of it. And a lot of companies fail, uh, you know, does not able to, what do you call that, uh, grow, sometimes decline in bankrupt. So this became a pretty big issue. Okay. So that is a more data graph. 
And uh, therefore the data header options, there are different options. There's an option called eight bits, okay? So, you know, copy flag, there's two bits for datagram or network control, one for reserve for future, second for, you know, debugging, measurement, you know, it, this is more used by the, the RP operator, okay? Um, that you reserve for future, there are a lot of reserve for future, there's an option of five bits, and the option and the loose source routing means that it's not firm source routing, it's very, um, you know, estimated source routing, you know, record route, uh, typically used for, you know, you got to record the route. So when you need to come back, when you need to come back, right? In the strict source routing is, uh, you know, once it's, a, you know, source routing is find it, you just follow that uh, recommendation. It doesn't change it. Sometimes it can dynamically change depending on the network traffic. But uh, in this case, it's uh, strict source routing. It does not change, okay? It's, there's a time step as well, okay? I think I will explain some of, some of this. You know, uh, an option seven, source create an empty list of IP addresses. Each source add IP address when it passes a diagram, okay? It, it, like, a, you know, dropping a breadcrumb so you can come back. The source route allows source to, you know, route, test the network, source writes is a list of IP addresses, strict source routing must follow exactly, right? Blue sources uh, can deter as long as it hit the address on the list. Okay, time spam here is a one, uh, another uh, uh, interesting um, source grid, empty list of addresses and timestamp, each switch is add IP address, you put the timestamp as well, okay? So that's my uh, lecture for the IP internet protocol. I hope at this time you have a good understanding why IP is created, right? Okay, so uh, let's move on uh, to ICMP. It's uh, ICMP stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. It doesn't actually carry the uh, datagram or any of the, you know, uh, the, the packet used by the user. But uh, you know, ICMP is more of the control messages. So uh, maybe pinging, a lot of different things you use as ICMP protocol messages, okay? So uh, uh, we've about allow reporting of travels and the network conditions used by the network operator, okay? And uh, you know, ICMP may carry on the data portion of IP datagram, um, usually, uh, when you identify the protocol equals one, then it notices that, oh, this is the ICMP message, okay? So ICMP is the same as the IP layer, uh, okay? But it doesn't impact the uh, you know, principal operation of the protocol. And uh, in, instead of a payload, uh, uses ICMP messages, here's the type code, checksum. If a checksum, make sure it's correct type specific data, okay, it's for troubleshooting. Let's see uh, what types of uh, ICMP message can it have. For there are eight different, uh, I would say that eight different uh, functional message is echo reply, like a pinging. A destination on which is a route is dead or, you know, destination is not reached. You know, source quench, you know, redirect is going to different uh, direction. Here's an echo request. It means that you request echo, there's an echo reply, which is zero. You know, reply back using echo reply. The time exceeded means, uh, you, know, you know, time has run out, you know, you know uh, because when it was, this is different than, uh, you know, regular IP addresses for time to live. You know, time exceed is when you're trying to do some troubleshooting, configuring, uh, it exceed, it takes so long, okay? There's timestamp request, uh, timestamp reply, uh, that's for when it generates the packets, ICMP could create uh, create a timestamp and, uh, you know, and the send back and the time span for reply, then you can know the how long this takes from to get to the source and the destination, right? 
So that's a, that's the type. So what about the code? Code we're looking at more on the information about um, the type is a network unutable, is a host unutable, port unutable, source route fail, destination network unknown, destination host unknown, those kind of things. It's more on the network troubleshooting. There's checksum and there's additional field, uh, which is a type dependent as well. Okay, so it's a different from uh, types and the code, right? And the code tell you more of the detailed information what has failed. Okay. Uh, for the echo request, the echo reply, like I said, uses a ping. Okay, and the host sends an echo request to B. The B returns echo reply with a copy of the identifier, sending process ID. So make sure you could send out multiple pings. Right, it's uh, multiple pings to the same, uh, uh, multiple pings to B basically. So when it comes back, you need to know which one is for which, okay? So uh, sending process ID, sequential number, packet ID, um, is for testing purpose, IP datagram, routing whole software by working properly. It also measures the uh, round trip delay, estimate the distance. So, Sometimes, you know, internet is not working, okay? Sometimes you ping using command messages, right? Sometimes when you ping, and if you ping doesn't kind of come back, there's something wrong with the network, right? So that could be a destination unreachable, um, you know, basically telling them, telling you that, uh, you know, router cannot forward IP data for various reasons. It does not tell you what's the reason, but they basically tell you it's unreachable. Okay. Um, source quench is a con is a congested router host can return source quench to reduce the transmission rate. Uh, no message to relieve source quench because uh, this is um, indicating that the hey slow down. Okay, there's too much traffic here and I cannot accommodate all the traffic. So basically. Uh, uh, asking the source to decrease the rate okay so it can so they don't want to drop a lot of the packets because of the a lot of the you know congestion is occurring right so um so that's why that the source quench occurs you know gradually increases the rate uh, uh later on This thing's not usually used much. In most cases, um, we're using um, ping, but in this case, is uh, sometimes routers are malfunctioning, right? It, it works, it doesn't work all the time. In certain cases, it doesn't work. So sometimes you use the, this function, okay? Uh, for the time exceed, uh, you know, in, like I said, IP datagram contain time to live in the header to prevent looping. Uh, in a this way is that you know field is decremented, datagram is discovered when field is zero. Means is uh, if it exceeds the you know time, it exceeds the in in the network. This is uh, is removing the all the control messages when you use for the when you send the you know control message in the network, it could be going around circle, right? So this is for removing the control messages and you don't wanna have a control messages going around and eating up your uh, network, okay? So uh, another thing is that when you use command trace route program to discover the router IP datagram, and uh, sometimes a lot of the programs out there, uh, you can trace route, you know, which router did it hit to get to the server. So uh, it, it has a limit for nine, nine app addresses. And uh, sometimes, you know, you want to take a route. Is it going to the, you know, uh, New Mexico or Texas? Sometimes it indicates that where you went through, right? So, uh, so you know, that's trace route programs being used. Another thing is a timestamp request, timestamp reply, sends a timestamp request to B and, and the, you know, you know uh, 
to get B's clock reading time of the day. Open receipt B as clock reading receive time. B return timestamp and add the clock reading to transmit time. So uses the three timestamp in time stamp reply message to estimate time difference between the B's clock. Okay. So uh, make sure uh, it's synchronized between the router. Okay. We, the, the clock is being used for make sure it's a synchronizing. Okay. Okay. So, you know, th those are the three, uh, you know, uh, timestamps uh, I indicated here. Uh, original timestamp, receive timestamp, transmit timestamp as well. Okay. Uh, I think that I wanted to stop here uh, for, I you know, um, ROA IPv4 and the ICMP, uh, you know, uh, protocol. Uh, thanks for watching.